Alright guys, so I got on the train and um, it's empty. So figured, you know, I have a couple stops left, so why not, you know, shoot something for you guys. The only problem is it's it's really loud in here. So you know, maybe if we go over here, it's a bit quieter. Follow me. Much better. Alright guys, so as you can see, I'm not in a subway station. Uh, I'm actually here at the VFX Technologies warehouse where we got our hands on an LED wall. Now, we haven't had the wall for very long and we are pretty limited on production equipment, but I was able to make a quick run and gun scene so what we're gonna do is take a look at that scene and then I will show you guys how I went about making it. So now that you guys watched the small test scene that I set up, let's go ahead and demystify LED wall setups and display and everything else that comes along with it. Oh, okay. So in order to demystify it all, I'll have to show you guys where I began, which is here on a normal television set. Once I got end display to work with the TV, it was just a matter of transferring that setup onto the LED wall. So let's take a look. The wall is essentially just another computer monitor, but you can't just plug the computer into the wall. It doesn't work that way. What you need is a processor that can communicate between the LED wall and your computer. This is because the LED wall is actually made up of smaller LED blocks that are combined together. And the processor is a device that pieces them together into one cohesive screen. So I hope that clears up any initial confusion that you might have with LED wall setups. Um, we will go into more detail as we come out with more videos, but for now, let's go ahead and take a look at how I went about creating the subway scene. So we'll begin with the equipment that I had available. For the lighting, I have a Aperture 300D, a small Aperture LED panel, and a LED bulb that I got from Ikea. For the camera, I have my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with a 50mm art series lens. And for the real-time tracking, I'm using a Vive 2.0 setup with a Vive puck attached to the camera. So with all the limitations that we have on our production equipment, we also didn't have Genlock, frame sync, and time code sync capabilities, as well as the camera being a rolling shutter camera, which in turn made the screen look like this. So the way that I was able to get around this was by adjusting the frame rate and the shutter speed of my camera, as well as the frame rate of the 3D scene. Now, I wouldn't recommend this on a full-fledged production, but for our testing purposes, it did just fine. So let's actually take a look at the 3D scene and why I chose it. All right, so I'm here on the master computer and I actually have the scene pulled up. 
So the reason why I chose this scene is one, because whoever made this did an extremely good job, but two, because of my limitation on lighting. Now, if you take a look at the scene, there's only three main light sources that I really needed to worry about, and they were all the same color temperature. So I knew with my three lights that I could match the lighting well enough to make it believable. So with that said, everything else really felt like a normal shoot. The main difference being that I actually get to see the environment as I try to match the lighting for each scene, which was quite nice. And the post-process workflow was minimized. Everything was shot in camera, so there was no need for any comping or visual effects. Now, obviously there's a lot more that goes into it, but we'll save that for future videos. <sighs> Alright guys, so that's going to be it for today. This was honestly a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to be making more of these. Whether it's the LED wall, computer hardware reviews, or content surrounding 3D platforms like Unreal Engine, we're going to do it all. So make sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.